I left my job because of these six words. I was making $250,000 a year in a prestigious public tech company that worth $200 billion, one of the most valuable company in the world. Among all that, I was very lucky to work with the group CEO who was very influential in the industry. I was CEO minus three, then CEO minus two. But I left after learning these lessons from the six words. It's been quite some time since I last shared with you guys my job situation due to two reasons. One, it's because I'm private. I'm open to share my thoughts, but I like to keep my personal life private. Second, I didn't really want to talk about a good job I have because there are a lot of people out there who didn't make as much as me, which makes it sound like I'm showing off my life. So even making this video, it's quite difficult for me to find a balance between considering my audience feelings and my own feeling talking about this matter. So long story short, back in my school days, I was pretty much on my own. I took 300,000 student loans. I did a wide range of part-time jobs from selling shoes in a department store to model to working in a law school. Then I graduated from Columbia and a couple of prestigious schools. And with all the fears over the years and living in a hole in the wall apartment, I worked really hard to pay off all my debts through good financial planning and good jobs that I had. Then I left my private equity job after pay off my debt. I was doing my own small business like kksuccess.com on coaching and school counseling, business advisory to startup and expert consulting to McKinsey and some of the big companies. I actually work a lot harder when I work for myself because I had to create everything from scratch. But I still felt very bored working from home by myself. So I spent a month and a half in Africa doing all this crazy solo travel to a dozen of African countries. When I came back, I was given a very attractive opportunity to work in a very successful company. Since I had many work in American companies like Amazon, I really wanted the opportunity to learn more about working in Asia. I felt like I didn't know enough about Asia until I actually also work in a big Chinese company. You know, China is a huge part of Asia, especially this is the opportunity to work very closely with the group CEO and senior management team. I was like, oh yeah, I mean. Fast forward, I was the first person hired overseas to manage and grow the international business. I had a lot of business trips and got to stay in all the five-star hotels. I stayed in Ritz Carlton, Jakarta many times to the point that everyone in the hotel knew me in and out. If you mention my name, downstairs in the lobby, they would be like, oh, KK's guest. Of course, let me bring you upstairs. I'm not exaggerating at all. I ramped up my married one boy nights to 105 nights, way more than enough for me to renew my titanium membership. Though some of the nights were from my personal, quite a big portion of it was contributed by my business trips. I was super grateful to have this job that allows me to learn from some of the top talents in the world, meeting amazing business partners across different countries, and of course, paying me a stable salary for me to pay for my expensive personal goal which is to complete 193 countries in the world and now I only have four countries left. For sure I still work hard. I joined Zoom calls on the weekend during live project time. I felt truly blessed and every day I thank God and universe for this opportunity. And last year something happened and made me rethink my life and career again and challenge my why. Actually on the first month when I first joined this job a couple years ago I told myself if I were to leave this job in the future, I wanted to join the missions of United Nations and volunteer to help the people in need. So while I was having the full-time constraints, which limit the amount of time I could take off to do my personal travel, to do my volunteer, I decided to join the military as a volunteer soldier to make my contributions to the society and to the country and people. A lot of you guys have seen my video about SAF, and yeah, I've gone through all those very rigorous training and living in a very tough environment during my military days. I was making good money, but I never forgot to contribute myself back. You know, going to school in the US, working in the US companies, like volunteer work are always highly encouraged. So I had always thought to myself, as long as I find the right volunteer opportunity, I should go for it. But I totally did not expect my conversation with my company was going to be so difficult. I submitted my volunteer application to the government, got the the interviews and pass all the checks after almost a year and a half. Even though the government would give an order for the employer to follow, they still asked me to seek for my employer's approval before I actually joined. Then one message become two, five, 10, 20, followed by multiple emails back and forth and a lot of Zoom calls to explain why I wanted to volunteer. I still remember I got interrogated by my HR asking me, this is not mandatory. 
Why do you have to volunteer? It's these six words. Why do you have to volunteer? That has given me so much thoughts into the purpose of my life. Followed by another phone call. Can you explain to me what the benefit is for our company? Then I still remember I spent all the long hours writing long emails at midnight after a long days of works already explaining to my HR. Because our company is serving the community in Singapore and Southeast Asia. You are making money out of their people. It's our honor to contribute back to the community and their people. And this is why I volunteer in Singapore, a place where I call home now. And that conversation didn't go anywhere. I had to explain myself for weeks and weeks and weeks. Why I'm not spending my time working for the company because they pay for my salary, but wasting time doing volunteer and serving the army. But this is something that I really wanted to do in my life. So facing all the obstacles from my company, I felt so frustrated and so stressed. And that was my first time having nights of nights of insomnia ever since I started my job. Fast forward, after fighting for many, many weeks, I finally get the approval to do volunteer work and excuse myself a bit, though they are not happy about it at all. But I said that because I may not be even able to pass the military training. It's a very rigorous training. A lot of people fail, so I may not even need to serve anymore in the following years. Then though they were very reluctant, I got by with it anyway. But ever since I came back from the military work, I got criticized a lot for not showing commitment to the company and even got a low lower performance rating than I expected during the mid-year performance review. Why this rating? Why this comment asking me to show more commitments to the company? Just because I took time off to serve the country and its people, but not spending the time to make profits for the company? I question myself, where is the why? Am I losing the why in my life? What's the purpose of my life? Working long hours to make profits for the private company and can't even make time to help my home, my country, my people, and my world? And yes, my parents were are super concerned about my job situation and afraid of me not being able to pay my bill after leaving my job. I feel bad for my parents to worry about me while they were just super proud of me making good salaries and working in a prestigious company. And sorry, mom and dad, I have to take away your pride in me and make you worry about me again. But I really question myself days and weeks. There are just a lot more people out there that needs my help more than my company. And you know what? Even in the end, before I left the company, they cut my email access a lot earlier than they promised. Once I signed the separation agreement and right after I hand over all the files and contacts, they've got everything they wanted from me. I think back to the time when I first started this job. I still remember I told myself that if I were to leave this job, I would want to work in the public sector and do more things to help others. So last month, I immediately started in my second YouTube channel after thinking about it for years. Just because it's already so much work to do all this editing by myself for this main channel, I really don't have bandwidth to start another channel. I also don't make money out of it. For me, it's like my charity project. I spend like 60 hours a week to make videos to share my life experiences. I need to reach 4,000 viewing hours in order to start making a few dollars only. But you know what? I feel the calling. It's a calling in me that asks me to share my life experiences with people who unfortunately don't have such opportunity to learn about a role like I do. Some travelers even laugh at my YouTube because they think my travel is not crazy enough. The first video I make on my second channel is to promote humanity in Syria, a place where kids never saw a foreigner due to a decade long of ISIS and civil wars. They welcome me with the warmest smiles because the best gift to them is simply my presence, meaning the country is back. Life is back. And that's my why why I live my life. And I continue to spend more time on kksuccess.com to help students who want to get education in their dream schools at a more affordable rate and to coach people who want to advance in their careers, achieve early financial independence and live a happier life to get much better results than other coaches that I'm told who were wasting their time and money before. But today, my practice is still very small. Not many people know. I always appreciate referral and spread the word. So one of my mentees who is a brilliant lady in private equity investment just got into Cambridge grad school and another mentee told me how much inspiration he got from me to motivate him to determine the next career path he want to go after and that's my why the calling of my life purpose and I still want to help small business to grow when they still have very limited resources I provide business advisories to them at a much more affordable rate than a large consulting firm and that's my why I continue to serve as a volunteer soldier to give back to the society Singapore and its people 
Capital and the world as well, and to look for the right opportunity, perhaps World Bank or UN, to help more people in need. And so far, I've got featured on NBC. She's led an accomplished life and showing us the world and its people. She has a master's from Columbia. She's a former model and runner-up in the USA beauty pageant. She's traveled the world writing books and journals. CNA, SPH, the company owns Straits Times, Asia One, New York Magazine. These six words, why do you have to volunteer, has given me so much thoughts into the purpose of my life. And this is why I volunteer for our society, our country, and our people. And this is why I volunteer in Singapore. And I also volunteer in a number of countries around the world. I hope my story gives you some courage to do things that you want to do. And most importantly, to think about the why in your life. If I can be of help for your financial independence, career, and life, feel free to reach out to me on kkss.com. Com. And I just want to end this video with this. You have more than 30 years to make money in your life. It's not only one way to make it. Would you rather spending all your time on nothing else but money or regret not having a memorable story to tell when you get old? Be it traveling around the world for life experiences and learnings or volunteer for a good cause. Remember, we only live once. If you like this video, do give a like, subscribe, and share my videos on this channel and another second new channel. Hope to see your comments. Love you guys.